Hey everyone, Dullistic here, and okay, this is an unboxing that I really did not think was ever going to happen because I refuse to pay reseller and scalper prices, but I am very happy to tell you today that I am unboxing the Creeproduction Abbey Abominable from G1 of Monster High. I, this is... This is such a big, like, this is a moment for me. G1 Abbey is one of the few original Monster High dolls that I genuinely enjoy. Because so many of them, I just get very weirded out by the proportions or the faces being terrible. Or just not being a fan of the designs. You know, it, there's a lot. But, but original Abbey has always been one of my favorites from G1. One of the few exceptions to the, like, G1 is just kind of bad. I mean, I not bad. That's not the way to say that. I just never vibed with it, okay? It, it just wasn't super for me. There are some dolls here and there that I do enjoy. I think there are some good designs, but as a whole, they just don't speak to me very much, and I refuse to pay secondhand prices for them now because they are completely out of hand. They're, like, at the level of crazy that the brats are at now, so I just have no desire to buy original ones. That's honestly why I typically only buy dolls that are currently on the market. <laughs> but I am so excited to have her in front of me. Now, I did buy one from Palmart a few months ago, but I wanted to keep that one in box because she came with a perfect face, and I wasn't really sure if I was going to get the opportunity to get another one. So I was like, if I can only ever have one of her, I'm keeping her in box. But I have a second one now, and uh, I can take her out and play with her. I'm so excited. You guys don't even know. Uh, I've had a lot of big moments on the channel lately. This is wild. Also, just real quick before we get into everything, I'm sorry this is taking so long to get to the like actual point of the video. Um, I've just had some really like heartwarming comments lately, and I know I don't get a lot of comments, but the ones that I do mean so much to me. And there's just been a lot of kindness lately, and I want to say thank you to everyone that has been commenting all those, like, positive, heartwarming things to me. Like, it, it means the world to me. <laughs> like, I know I don't, I'm not a very big creator. I'm such a very, very small creator. But it makes me really happy. And I'm glad y'all enjoy my stuff. I'm glad you enjoy me enough to continue watching. Because <laughs> that was sort of a big hurdle that I was afraid to get over at first of, like, you know, oh, am I going to be comfortable being in having my voice in videos? Am I going to be comfortable having my hands in videos? Am I going to be comfortable doing this at all? But I have only gotten more confident in myself doing this, and I've only gotten more confident in my ability to actually do it because I have not wavered on it once. Like, my desire to do this and do YouTube hasn't wavered, which is kind of rare for me. It's very rare that I find something that I don't lose motivation to do, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Anyway, I just really appreciate all of you. So let's get into the unboxing now that the sappy stuff is over. Oh wait, we have to go over the packaging. What am I doing? So it has the original box design for Monster High. I very much enjoy these boxes. I think they are super cool. I love all of the like cardboard work that goes into it. Because I'm not I'm not a big fan of the like the sort of blister packaging that they have now. I do prefer this older style where it's mostly printed cardboard with all of these cool designs and stuff. I and I actually think that's a general consensus amongst Monster High fans, even G3 fans. So, anyway, just just the thing I wanted to point out. I think it's very cool. I'll, like, look at, like, the chains, the skeletons in the background, this little snowflake cutout, the big thing right here. Love that they lost the trademark or copyright or whatever for her pet. So, this pet just has no name. <laughs> and this gorgeous artwork of Abby... I do enjoy the G1 art style. I think it is gorgeous. What was this pet's original name? Because, like, the new one is Tundra, isn't it? Is is her name Tundra, or did they have to get a new one for the new one? Who is this? Let me know in the comments below. And you can see the read-up. Meet the frighteningly fashionable teenage children of the world's most famous monsters. She's the daughter of the Yeti. I love that she's the daughter of the Yeti instead of the, like, the abominable snowman. But her name is Abby Abominable. That's fun. She's 16. Her favorite food is the cheese of the yak and pancakes work. And her BFFs are Laguna Blue and Frankie Stein. 
cute. And I am very happy to say that I got the, both of mine actually, I got the variant of Abby that has the good tinsel, not the terrible tinsel. I think it's extremely evil <laughs> that there is a bad variant of the tinsel out there. Like, that's just not nice. Oh, okay, so we've got some... We've got some warping. That's fine. And then, I think there's a piece of tape. Yeah. Oh, let's unbox my first Monster High doll. Or G1, anyway. <laughs> and I love that so much of this is cardboard. I do think a lot more could be cardboard. Like, it's super cool that this is held in by little cardboard straps. I'm not sure why more of this stuff isn't held in by cardboard. Because, like, they easily could. Very nice. Here's her stand. It's in a sort of sky blue color that matches her nicely, but gives a little bit of a contrast. And you can see that there is glitter in it. Is there glitter in the... So not on the waist clip, but on the stick. And is it in the... It has some, like, shimmeriness to it, but there's not glitter in this one. That's okay. I think it's pretty either way. And then we'll get her brush out. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Cool. I need you to stand up. Please. Okay, and we, <laughs> let me stop holding the scissors. Uh, we've got the original Monster High brush sculpt. This is so cool. It's cast in the same, like, glittery blue as the stand piece. And it's a skelet that says Monster High on the handle. I love, and it's got these tines. Very cute. Now see, this may actually work decently well for brushing their hair. I wouldn't suggest doing it a lot, but you know, for a cute little moment, that could be good. Now let's get Abby out. Okay, where are... There's a lot of like rubber bands and stuff happening. So I don't want to cut something important, but I want to get everything out. Ooh, now that is a tight... Oh, how about I don't say the rest of that out loud, actually, because that is so suggestive. Let's hold that. Okay. Does she have them in the back of her head? Yes, okay. So these seem pretty tight back there. I'm actually going to use a pair of nail clippers. And I don't usually get the luxury of being able to do this without like massive amounts of work or like tape to get through. Cool. And so it looks like our hair is just rubber banded. It's not tea tied. So we should be able to just do this. Oh, that was so smooth and nice. Okay, and she is out on her stand. We had a bit of uh, camera difficulty there, but uh, I love her so much. It's a pretty tight fit around this dress. Like, it definitely, she does not feel like she's going anywhere. Like, she is on the stand. So, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. But now that she's out, let's get into the actual review. So, starting with her hair, as always, she's got on a fur headband that goes over the front of her hairline. It's tea tied at the top of her head and then, like, over her ears, so it'll stay in place. And it's also being held there by this rubber strap. Very nice. And she has saran in this sort of, like, whitish, platinum-y blonde color because saran doesn't really do stark white. And she does have pink, blue, and purple rooted at the base of her head. It's very pretty. I love these colors. And it looks like all throughout the hair she has tinsel rooted. And it's not the garbage tinsel that a lot of dolls have. It's actually a very nice, like, normal looking tinsel. It provides a really pretty effect. Like, it definitely goes with the glitter in her skin to give her that, like, wintry, snowy Yeti look. Which is very cool. And it's just laying. It doesn't have a particular style. It's just sort of swept back by the headband. It's very nice. And it goes down to about her knees. Ooh, girl, don't fall over. I just talked about how good your stand was. <laughs> and then onto her face. So you can see she is misprinted a little bit. 
like this eye is lower than this one. But that's okay. If you sort of tilt the head, you barely notice. <laughs> but she has big purple eyes and these big, like, and big purple eyeshadow on top and bottom. It looks really good. A nice contrast to her skin. And her eyebrows are a very interesting color. Because they're, they're sort of like a deep... They're sort of like a dark, plummy, mauve, brown. <laughs> like, it's it's a hard color to explain. But they sort of, they, they work decently well. And I think if she had had, like, matching eyebrows to her hair, she might look insane. So I like the direction they went. And her big lips, they are huge. I like that they overdrew the bottom. I like that they're very much utilizing the maximum potential of the lip sculpt. But you can see she has this sort of, like, mulberry lip color. It's so pretty with her Yeti tusks. I think they would be considered tusks, right? Are they fangs or would they be tusks? I like tusks. But anyway, it looks good. They look a little misplaced. Like, you'd think they would be closer in a little bit and they wouldn't be curving so dramatically inward. They almost look like pincers. Oh, she is shedding. She is shedding. That's okay. That's to be expected with Saran. And she does have glitter embedded in her skin. It is all over her entire body, not just her face. And it gives a really cool effect. I like it. I The texture is not as unpleasant as you might think it would be. I'm someone who, uh, like, tactile sensations can be really... <laughs> like, they can make my brain go a little bit crazy sometimes. But it's not bad. It's rough, but in a good way if that makes sense like it doesn't feel like they just poured glitter on her and like let it be <laughs> it's definitely sealed in with something it's nice i have actually customized an abby doll before uh, i turned her into glaceon and i i th did i try i think i tried to remove the glitter from that doll and it actually took so much work that it wasn't worth it it was wild but yeah, she's gorgeous. You know what? Coincidentally, I actually think that was a Wave 1 Abby, but she was in such bad condition when I caught her that there was no saving her. So I ended up turning her into Glaceon. But yeah. That's the sad thing about the original Monster High dolls, is that so much about them was done poorly, and I think a lot of people don't want to admit that to themselves. Like, the Toxic G1 fans don't want to admit that to themselves. A lot of the stuff was done so poorly, like the glue in the head, which destroys their hair, the wonky printing, which, I mean, this is not a great example of new updated printing styles, because obviously she's wonky, like the weak joints, the body is very, very spindly, the stand clips weren't super great, like I heard they broke quite often, and yeah, I just feel like there was a lot with G1 that was really bad. Oh my god, the elastic hips, disgusting. Why was that ever a thing? And she does have earrings in. I'm sorry, this video is a little all over the place. It's also going to be long, and I apologize. <laughs> uh, so in her, one ear, she has on this blue, like, icicle mold earring. It's very pretty. And then in the other, she has a purple snowflake. It's sort of a pinky purple. Very pretty. I like that they went with different earrings to, like, give her color scheme some interest. Abby is one of those dolls that I feel like her color scheme always worked really well. And it has, like, a ton of variety that you can do. Now for her outfit. Oh, you know what? She does have a necklace on, which I guess I should have mentioned before I moved on. She does have a necklace. You can't see it super well beneath this. You can't see it super well beneath the, like, fur piece here. But she does have a necklace on. And it's sort of, it's like a cluster of ice crystals. It's really cool. It's in, cast in the same blue plastic as her earring. And now onto her outfit. So she has on this knit mini dress with this cool, like, icy geometric pattern on top. And these ribbed side pieces. Again, it is a very, very tight fit in this stand clip. And I think it's sort of warping the fabric a little bit up here. I want to try to fix that, but I don't know if it's possible. And it also has these white strings crisscrossing. I thought they would go all the way around the dress, but they just go around the front, which is fine. I mean, that's that's really not that big of a deal. And the dress has a fur lining on top, and she has these fur arm muffs. Arm 
warmers, <laughs> forearm warm warmers made out of the same white fur. It's very nice. It's very, very soft and stark white. It's all the same, like, white fur. It's wonderful. And it's surged on the top and, or hemmed serge, whatever you want to call it, on top and bottom so that it won't fray. Again, very nice. And you can see that she has a, like, little bag piece that looks like it'll clip onto one of these strings, but it's just sort of rubber banded on, which is a weird choice. Because, like, why wouldn't you just go ahead and snap it onto one of these strings? I don't know. And it has a little dangly pearl, I think, key? Is that supposed to be a key? It looks like it. Like a skelet key? It's cool. I really like the details on this dress. And again, the color scheme is just wonderful. All of these little pink, blue, purple, and white triangles coming together to form this amazing design is so cool. And the printing does continue onto the back here, but the like the strings and this ribbed and these ribbed panels don't. That's just on this side. Oh, and I forgot to mention the bottom is this ribbed fabric. It's very nice. And she does have tights on. They're cool. I don't know if they're pink or purple because I think they could read either way. In the artwork, it looks like they're supposed to be pink, but in person, they definitely give a little more purpley. So I won't really know until I take them off. But let's move down to her shoes because they are so good. So first off, she has these white leg warmers here made out of the same white fur as her arm warmers, headband, and the trim on the dress. They go almost all the way up to her knees, but they are so nice and long. They cover the tops of the shoes. They look so cool. Like, ah, uh, and they're so well made. It's wonderful. And now to the actual shoes. She has these white platform snow boots on. And the sculpting is, again, incredible. This is something we already know about Monster High, both G1 and G3. The molding is almost always going to be amazing. You can see the, like, the sole patterns. You can see they're meant for walking in the snow. The, like, quilted patterns here. Give me a second. I'll take these off so we can get a look at them, like, without the leg warmers on them. And yeah, here they are without the leg warmers. They look, oh, they look so good. Like, look at all that detail, the quilting, the shoelacing all the way up, all the different panels of fabric used to make boots, and then the design on the sole of the shoe. Like, look at that. That is meant for walking in snow. That is so awesome. The only thing about them that's kind of weird is that they're rubbery. Like, they're not hard plastic, they're rubber. I don't know why they chose to make it rubber. I'm not mad about it. Like, to be clear, I I, I don't care if they're, like, hard plastic or rubber. I, I don't care. But they... <laughs> it's it's just sort of silly because, like, you can squish them and it's very, like, Polly Pocket-esque. Or, like, those, um... The, like, Disney princesses that had the, the rubber clothing that kids chewed on. <laughs> like, my siblings definitely had those and chewed on them. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put them back on her. And, yeah, we'll get back into it. Oh, and I did take the tights off. And they are, in fact, purple. So, good to know. It's a pinkish purple, but it's still purple. And before we get into the two things she has left, we'll talk about her articulation. So she does have the original standard articulation for Monster High, which is wrist, elbow, shoulder, head, hip, and knee. All decent joints. She's a little stiff right now, which is totally fine. She's a brand new doll. I would prefer that she comes out of the box stiff so that over time she gets worked into being good and she can hold pose decently well. And she does have a really cool, unique hand sculpt, or maybe not unique, unique, but it is a bigger clawed hand sculpt I like. And it does seem like she has bigger feet than the other Monster High dolls, so I like that. Now, do I know that for certain? No, don't take my word for that. <laughs> she could have totally normal size feet. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, I don't I don't have many G1 dolls, so I can't verify that. But yeah, I love her. She's so cool. And there are two more things to look at with Abby before we are done. First up is her pet. They are so adorable. Of course, they don't have a name, and I don't know their gender, so I'm just going to say they. But it's this adorable little lavender um, woolly mammoth with white fur. It is adorable these big white tusks it's smiling the pink eyes oh, so cute tundra then tundra now <laughs> now i have to say i do prefer the new one 
I do think New Tundra is adorable, but oh, so sweet. I love woolly mammoths. And I think it's so campy that she has a full-ass woolly mammoth as her pet. That's so silly. The very last thing that she comes with is her diary. And to my knowledge, I think this is a recreation of the diary that the original doll came with. So it's really cute. You can see it belongs to Abby. We've got some of her icons here. A snowflake, the blue striping. This diary is not for your reading. That's so funny. Ooh, it's nice and crisp. And yeah... Got a lot of fun things happening here. I'm not going to read it to you. I mean, feel free to pause if you want to read the pages. I'm not super concerned with it right now. I will read it at some point. Oh, it's in French now. I will read it at some point, but I'm not going to do it right now. <laughs> but this is so cute. It's so nice, too. Like, it's made out of nice material. I'm impressed. Because, like, usually when they do paper products for dolls, they're just sort of crap. Like, you know. Y'all know. You collect dolls. Their paper products are usually garbage, so it's nice to see one that isn't. <laughs> okay, and that is absolutely everything for the G1 Abby Creep production. I could not be happier to have her in front of me right now. This is truly a doll that I never thought I would have in my collection because she goes for an insane amount of money. If you want to find her complete, she goes for an insane amount of money. And even then, when you get her, you have to do glue treatments and yellowing treatments and like it's it's not only an insane amount of money it's an insane amount of work to make her look good when you get her so I like I could almost cry I'm so happy to have her and if you weren't able to get her I'm so sorry like thankfully they stayed on Amazon and Walmart far longer than any other creep production has like this wave has stayed longer than wave one did and I think that's because they learned that they needed to make more and they needed to distribute them properly. So I think they sold out pretty instantaneously on Mattel Creations, but they were up on Walmart and Amazon for a few days. And I'm so thankful. I like <laughs> the fact that I was able to get them at all. I was also able to get Spectra. I wasn't able to get Ghoulia, which I'm kind of okay with. I, I've never been a big Ghoulia fan. And I wasn't able to get the Cleo and Deuce 2 pack, which is disappointing because I did want both of those. Uh, Deuce more so than Cleo, just because I'm a Deuce fan. But yeah, I'm super happy to have these in my possession. And I, yeah, we can talk about their price, uh, but it doesn't really matter because I don't think they're available anymore now. Uh, but they were $25 retail, which I think is completely reasonable, especially for a reproduction product. Like $25 is so reasonable. And I think they absolutely bring the value that they are worth. Thank you, Amazon. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, Amazon. Because I'm so happy to have these dolls now. I mean, not happy that she's polypropylene. I think that's actually unforgivable. Especially when they could have just given her Saran. It's actually insane to me that they didn't give her Saran. Like, <laughs> why? This is... Both of these are garbage fabrics. You couldn't give her Saran. That's all I'm saying. Um... <laughs> Okay, well, let me know down below uh, your thoughts on G1 Abby. Do you like her? Because I do. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Hold on a minute. Don't you dare go anywhere. I'm going to put G3 Abby in here. Ah, look at them both. Queens. Absolute stunnishas. But yeah, let me know down below what you think of G1 Abby. Were you able to get any of the creep reductions? Did you care about getting the creep reductions? I want to know. I want to hear about it. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Do none of them. Just happy you're interacting with my content whatsoever. But if you do, it helps on my channel and I will be in love with you. And we can go to Monster High and we can have, what was it she liked? Pancakes? I, can we have waffles instead? If you like waffles, spam the chat below. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Uh, I put out new videos every Monday and Friday for the most part. So I will see you in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Bye.